Hi everyone, this is Ashley Latecki Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today I'm in my kitchen and I wanted to share with you my go-to remedy for fevers and colds. Now, this is a great blend if you have a child or you yourself get sick and you really want to boost your immune system and relieve tension um, and help yourself recover more quickly. So let me show you what I've got here. There's a classic recipe here in Rosemary Gladstar's book. This is an excellent book to have on hand, her herbal recipe book. And she talks about catnip elder tea as a traditional formula for children. And it contains two parts catnip, two parts elder blossoms, one part echinacea root and one part peppermint. And this comes from a traditional uh, recipe that I've used before, which is peppermint, elder flower, and catnip. Um, but I'm gonna, I change it up a little bit because I have an abundance of bee balm. This is Monarda fistulosa. This grows everywhere here in Minnesota. I grew it in my garden in Maryland, so I've got a lot of it. And it's another wonderful herb that you can use for fevers and for as a diaphoretic to move uh, fevers and colds out. It also has this really great expectorant property, so it helps to clear the lungs. So what I like to do for my recipe is I have elder flowers here and I do two parts elderflowers. So here I'm using a tablespoon. So I would do two tablespoons of my elderflower. I also have oregano leaf. I grew this in my garden a few years ago. And this one is uh, excellent too for breaking up phlegm. It's also very warming, clearing. So I'm just gonna do one part of the oregano leaf. One part of my bee balm and it's really fluffy so it's a nice fluffy one and I want to just show you the flowers from my batch so the nice thing is when you harvest your own you can dry them and make them <laughs> isn't that beautiful they still have that radiant color and this was from two years no one this is from last year and then I'm going to add for my nervine I'm going to add a little bit of chamomile so I'm just going to add one teaspoon of chamomile or a tablespoon so, and not only does this look beautiful, it's gonna taste really nice too. If I wanted to add a little sweetness, I could add a little bit of licorice root, so long as the person did not have high blood pressure, uh, or I could add a little bit of stevia to it. And then I would just blend these all up, pour about two to three cups of hot water over it, probably three cups for this amount, three cups of hot water, let it steep just for maybe 10 minutes, strain it, and then drink one cup. And I do that three times a day. And if you need to sweeten it, you can add a little bit of honey, but this would be a great one. You do wanna drink it warm. That does help the diaphoretic action, that heating and pore opening and sweating action of the herbs really come forward. So give this a try, let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, I think you will really enjoy it. And Try to have these herbs on hand so that way when a cold or something comes through your family, you are prepared. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Let me know if there's any herbs that you like to add to your cold flu tea recipes.